Hello and welcome to the Comlex USMLE Instant Podcast. Today's topic is mesenteric ischemia. Usually this occurs due to atherosclerotic lesions of at least two of the three major vessels supplying the bowel. And so on the board exam, look for signs of weight loss. Patients will have an abdominal brewery. Patients will also complain of signs of post prandial pain, which is very common. Again, we're talking about chronic intestinal ischemia. So chronic intestinal ischemia is concerned with the bowel and the lack of blood supply, possibly due to atherosclerosis. And this falls under mesenteric ischemia. Now, what is the definitive diagnosis made by? Well, The definitive diagnosis is going to be made by aortogram. Aortogram is the diagnostic study of choice. The important characteristics of chronic mesenteric ischemia on physical exam will include an epigastric brewery and signs of peripheral vascular disease. So with the history, look for abdominal pain, weight loss, cardiovascular disease possibly and intermittent crampy abdominal pain um, is even more specific. So some of the risk factors include as we mentioned occlusion of two or more of the major splanchnic arteries usually celiac and superior mesenteric artery and diagnosis as we mentioned is made by aortography or angiography for Understanding even a detailed view, a multi-slice CT angiography can also be ordered. So what is the treatment? Well, the treatment is surgical intervention known as an n arterectomy which has a surgical vascular reconstruction through a bypass procedure. And this is indicated in the absence of malignancy, particularly pancreatic cancer. So the patient has pancreatic cancer, then you want to first rule that out and then do the surgery. That's an important point for the boards. Also, understand that duplex scanning of visceral vessels is a important prevention and screening tool. So what about acute mesenteric ischemia? Well, the difference here is going to be the main point that is the presentation. It's rapid onset that is out of proportion with vomiting, diarrhea, emboli formation. Usually patients have a history of atrial fibrillation. There is um, a mesenteric vessel secondary to atherosclerotic changes or an emboli from the heart that's usually involved as one of the most common causes. And the number one embolization occurs to the superior mesenteric artery from the heart. After that, it's mainly the visceral arteries and advanced atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease causing a decrease in blood supply is the major pathogenesis leading to a low cardiac output, possible transient hypotension, a venous infarction can also cause acute intestinal ischemia. And on history, you'll see signs that are different from chronic intestinal ischemia. With chronic intestinal ischemia, you had a patient with weight loss, postprandial pain, and abdominal brewing. With acute, you have patients who present with abdominal pain, with colicky pain, that's vomiting along with diarrhea as other key signs. So the vomiting, diarrhea, sudden onset, out of proportion, starting in the periumbilical region, then becoming diffuse with sudden severe pain on bowel movement and patients who have pain with eating, usually with thrombosis or other signs. Patients who have a history of digoxin use with a splanchnic constriction or a history of acute MI, CHF, all of these along with atrial fibrillation, are important medical 
conditions you should look for. So on physical exam, you look for mild signs of bleeding and on your diagnosis is going to depend upon a leukocytosis with a WBC count above 20,000 with an elevated amylase and a creatinine phoscokinase along with lactic acidosis in cases of infarction can be seen. The diagnosis is confirmed by abdominal angiography and that's going to be your answer on the board exam. Now, what about the treatment? Well, hydration and broad-spectrum antibiotics for all patients is beneficial. So for any non-occlusive disease, you should hydrate and provide adequate medication. And surgery is done through basically a bypass procedure um, and the removal of the embolus is the treatment of choice. You want to assess for bowel, for viability, and resect any necrotic bowel. And after the surgery is done, a second look operation in 24 hours is usually done to look for residual bowel. That was a complex and USMLE podcast and a review of mesenteric ischemia and the differentiation of chronic intestinal ischemia with acute intestinal ischemia. Thank you for listening and good luck in medical school and in your board exams.